So what do you need to get started? You know, it's a question that we're asked all the time. It's a question that I'm sure you struggle with at home anymore. You know, there's so many options. There's so many different places you can go and you never really know who to turn to to get the answers of what you actually need versus what's available and out there. Well, that question is answered in different ways depending on uh, different budgets, different expectations or aspirations. What are you doing? Are you looking to get involved in this as a hobby? Are you gonna film your, your kids or your buddies or your grandkids? Or is this something that you're looking to maybe get into as a career down the road? Uh, what is your budget now versus what it may be in a year or two from now? So how you can grow with the camera gear that you first start out with. Again, all very difficult questions, but all questions that we hope to answer right here in this lesson today. First of all, I think you need to ask yourself, what is my budget? Uh, be truthful, be realistic to this budget, and understand that it's not just the camera that you need to get started. Is that budget $500? Is that budget $5,000? And understand that when working with the right people, when working with the right retailer, you can customize these packages no matter what your budget is. Everybody has a budget and it's not something you should be ashamed of, it's, a, it's something that you should be honest with yourself with. So one thing to consider when looking at that budget is the price of the camera because the camera drives the package price. And it's nice when you work with some of these companies, like we, we work very closely with Bedford Camera and Video, Bedford Outdoors. Well, they'll have packages designed for you. Uh, whether it be a $600 package or a, a $6,000 package, the camera drives the price of that package. So for instance, if I've got a, uh, a two or $300 camcorder accessorized with the right items, I might land at $600. But if I've got a $1,000 camcorder, with the right accessories, I might land at $1,500, $1,600. Well, the bulk of that package price is the camera model. So you need to first and foremost look at the camera model that fits your budget most closely, and then look at the package that surrounds that camera price. Uh, again, all the while keeping in mind what that total overall budget is for you. And that's again, not to shamelessly plug Bedford, but it's great to work with somebody that's gonna be there through it all for you and there with your budget in mind to say, okay, this is the camera that fits your budget the most. Now let's build a package around it. So again, going uh, back to the package that I have sitting on the table right now, it's a very basic outdoor package. And once we have chosen the camera model that fits our budget, we can now look at a support system. And the two items that I've got on the table here today, uh, when it comes to support system, would be a tripod, and a tree arm. Now, depending on your application, do you do a lot of uh, run and gun hunting? Do you a lot of hunting in a ground blind? Then you may only need a tripod. If you're the tree stand whitetail guy or girl, you may wanna look at a tree arm. I myself wanna do as much hunting as I possibly can. I'm in a ground blind, I'm hiking out west, and I'm in a tree. So I may wanna look at both a tripod and a tree arm. Now, the, the, the nice part about these two items in the support system is, no matter what you choose, or if you choose both, you've got to have a fluid head on top of it. But what's nice is when you buy this quality gear, this fluid head is interchangeable, okay? And this fluid head is what gives you your, your pans and your tilts in a fluid-like motion. And it's important to, to put quotes around that word fluid. We do not want a friction head or a photo head used for video because that's what's going to freeze up on you in the winter and it's going to give you rigid, jagged motion, not fluid. The nice thing is about a, a high-end fluid head is that you can remove it from your tripod and put that same head onto your, to your tree arm, making it very versatile and making it so that you only have to buy one and not one for each item. Jumping back to the camera and as these lessons progress, you're gonna hear me talk a lot about audio. And if we take a look at this camera in the middle, uh, as well as this camera off to your left, we've got a shotgun microphone attached to these two cameras. And what that shotgun microphone is capturing is that ambient audio, that directional ambient audio, uh, so the crunching of the leaves, the turkey gobbling, the elk bugling, it's capturing that audio at a much higher quality to what comes on board in the camera out of the box. So you might say, well, is that necessary? This may be that one item in this package that it could be argued that it's not necessary, 
But I promise you, the quality that's gonna come out of a microphone like this versus the onboard mic on the camera, you're gonna see that it's necessary almost instantly. And if you want high quality video, I always say, High quality audio helps carry a high quality video. So look into a shotgun mic. Depending on the camera model you choose will determine which microphone model you need to look at. And again, there's different price points in it. Uh, lastly, we've got our camera, we've got our support system, we've got our fluid head, we've got our audio. Where are we gonna record all this video? I know it seems simple and I know it almost seems ridiculous that I'm bringing it up. But in today's world, I, I see a lot of people go online and they put these packages together themselves and they buy all this stuff, they get it home and they realize they didn't even get an SD card to record this media too. So you've got to have at least one SD card and there's a lot of different uh, SD cards out there that you can look at, different speed, transfer speeds and whatnot, and we'll talk more about that later. But regardless, you've got to have media storage to put your media on. And an SD card is going to be the most popular amongst today's cameras. So at the end of the day, uh, there's a lot of different choices and, and it doesn't matter whether you're going with Canon or Sony or any of the major brands. Um, the big thing to think about here, and actually I haven't brought this up yet and I think it's a great place to do this. Be very careful where you buy camera gear. Um, look at pricing. Uh, here's a great tip for you to know at home. If you see a price online that seems too good to be true, then it's too good to be true, don't touch it. And, and, and take that uh, uh, for a, a tip or a suggestion, or you may think I'm trying to throw a sales pitch out there, but I promise you, take that, believe in it, and trust in it. If you see camera A for sale for $500 here, here, and here, give or take $10, and then all of a sudden you see it over here for 250, don't touch it. There, there's, it's a gray market camera and it's a very, uh, it's, a, it's a dangerous road to travel down and there's a lot of reasons why I won't go into, but uh, be very careful where you buy your camera gear. And yes, I will bring up Bedford camera and video. I will bring, bring up Bedford Outdoors right now. They're a fantastic place to shop and you save money through Film the Hunt. Uh, you can save 5% right off the bat across the board on everything you buy, um, along with other special discounts throughout this course and others. But they're great people, they're giving you your cell phone numbers, um, they're there for you seven days a week for your customer service and for your help. So trust in them, trust in us, ask us. We can give you opinions all day long on different camera gear and how to get started. But when we're talking about what you need to get started, you can look right here on this table, find the camera, the audio, the support system, and the fluid heads that you'd need to get started, bare minimum, to get out there and start filming your hunts as quick as tomorrow.